Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate hierarchical binary logistic regression using Stata. And before I get started I do want to mention that underneath the video description you will find a link to the Stata data file I'll be working from in this presentation. So you can download the data to follow along. You will also find a link to a PowerPoint that will provide more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. And more specifically, I'm going to leave a lot of the more substantive discussion of results to the PowerPoint. So before we open up Stata and begin running our analysis, I would like to, for us to consider our example data and our, our hierarchical modeling strategy. So the example data is fictional student data. And inside that data set, we have a variable called pass. And this is, our, this is going to be our dependent variable in our analysis. So the pass variable is a binary variable coded 0 to indicate a student did not pass a test, or 1 to indicate that a student did pass a test. So fundamentally, we're going to be predicting the probability of a student passing a test as a function of various predictors. So you'll notice that our first model right here, model 1, contains two predictors. We have anxiety and mastery goals serving as predictors, again, of the probability of a student passing a test. Now we're going to add in two additional predictors in model 2. So we're adding in student engagement and student interest. So these are being uh, added alongside anxiety and mastery goals. So now we have four predictors of the probability of a student passing a test. And as you can see, Model 1 uh, is a subset of Model 2. In other words, Model 1 is nested within Model 2. And one of the things that we do in the context of hierarchical regressions is we want to test whether the additional variables that have been included in our model uh, result in a significant improvement in model fit. So the test that we will be using to do that is the likelihood ratio chi-square test. Now you'll see also that we have model 3 that's given and for this model we're adding in income level as a predictor of the probability of a student passing. Now in our data set the income level variable is a factor variable so it's going to need to be recoded into binary predictors for inclusion in the model. So income level is coded 1 for uh, low income, 2 for medium income, and three for high income. So because we have three categories, we're going to recode that variable into two binary variables. And I'm going to call them INC2 and INC3 right here. And as we talked about before in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, addressing the issue of in the increase in model fit as a result of adding in uh, predictors, we're going to test using the likelihood ratio chi-square whether the addition of the income level variables result in a significant improvement in fit from model 2 to model 3. So briefly uh, we've now opened up Stata and you can see that we have uh, in our factor uh, in our variable list we've got anxiety, mastery goals, interest, engagement, there's our income level variable right there and there's our pass variable right there. So I'm going to be using uh, the do file editor uh, to perform our analysis. We're going to be using the nest, uh, the nest reg command. And it's very easy to use, so I'll show you how easy it is uh, as we go through. So first off, we're going to open up the do file editor by clicking on the do file icon right here. And before we actually run our uh, regression analysis using the nest reg command, uh, it is important to note that we cannot incorporate factor variables uh, into our analysis when using that particular command. So we can't use uh, the income level variable with the i dot prefix in, uh, when we're running our analysis or else we'll get an error message. So what we're going to need to do before we uh, run our analysis is to convert this uh, income level variable, this factor variable, into our two binary predictors for inclusion in our model. So to do that, I'm going to start off by typing in tabulate and then the name of our variable which is income and then LEV with the capital L. We'll type comma and then we're going to use a generate option and this is going to be used to generate those new variables. Inside a parenthesis, I'm going to use a, uh, include a root name, so I'll just call it INC um, so it's just an arbitrary name and in parenthesis right there. So when I highlight all of this and click on execute selection, 
you'll see that I get some uh, information regarding the frequencies and percentages associated with those categories in our output. But in our uh, variable list, now we have uh, three variables that have been added. We have INC1, INC2, and INC3 that are given right there. And basically, we are going to be using the INC2 and INC3 variables and the regression slopes for INT, uh, INC2 and INC3 in our analysis are going to capture the difference uh, between uh, students in the medium income group and the low income group and between the high income group and the low income group with respect to our outcome variable. So now let's go ahead and use our uh, nest reg command. So I'm going to type in nest reg. I'll follow that with a comma and then LR, that's for likelihood ratio, and then follow that with a colon. Next, we're going to use the logit command, so I'm going to type in logit, follow that up with the name of our dependent variable, which is pass, and then we're going to enter uh, blocks of predictors um, in, in, a, in, a, in a series of uh, stages here. So we'll start off with our first uh, block. We'll type in anxiety and mastery. And so that's inside the first set of parentheses. Then we're going to type inside the next set of parentheses. We'll type in interest and engage. And then in the last set of parentheses, I'm going to type in the INC1, excuse me, INC2 and INC3 variables in parentheses there. And just to kind of uh, keep our uh, extraneous output to a minimum, I'm going to add in a comma and then type no log. So now we're ready to run our analysis by highlighting all of this and clicking on execute selection. So you can see that the analyses have been run and we have three separate binary logistic regression models that are given uh, that contain uh, you know, fit related information in the regression slopes and, and uh, significance tests. And then down here in this last piece of our output, these contain the likelihood ratio test that will allow us to test whether uh, through the addition of uh, predictors uh, from one model to the other where we, whether we have a significant improvement in fit. So just briefly, let's just kind of review each of our models. You can see up here that we have, there is actually a likelihood ratio test associated with this model. That test is a test of whether our model containing our two predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over a null or intercept only model. So you can see that it says right here block one anxiety and mastery goals have been entered and we have a statistical significance for this test which indicates that our model does in fact represent a significant improvement in fit over a null or intercept only model. We see that anxiety emerged as a negative and statistically significant predictor whereas mastery goals emerged as a positive and statistically significant predictor uh, in our model. And kind of loosely speaking, we can say then that uh, with respect to anxiety, students who were scoring higher or students who scored higher on anxiety uh, had a lower probability of passing the test than students who scored lower on anxiety. Then with respect to mastery goals, we can say that students who scored higher on mastery goals had a greater probability of passing the test than students scoring lower on mastery goals. So then we can scroll down a little bit further and we can go to block two. So you'll notice it says block two, interest and engagement. And here we have all four of our predictors uh, for that model that have been entered. So the likelihood ratio test that's given right here is a test of this model in relation to the null or intercept only model. So we have statistical significance indicating that our model containing this full complement of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over a null model. You'll notice too that anxiety uh, actually does not uh, is not a significant predictor in that model and neither is interest or the student interest uh, variable. We do see that mastery goals uh, the slope uh, for that variable is positive and we have statistical significance and then for engagement the slope is positive and again we have statistical significance. So um, basically uh, what this is telling us is that students scoring higher on mastery goals um, had a greater probability of passing the test than students scoring lower uh, and the same goes for engagement. Students scoring higher on engagement uh, had a greater probability of passing than students scoring lower on engagement.
Then we're going to scroll down a little bit further and we have uh, our block three. So we have INC2 and INC3 that's been added alongside all of the previous uh, predictors. So the likelihood ratio test that's given here, again, is, is basically used to test whether this model represents a significant improvement in fit relative to a null model. And so uh, based on that, it appears that that is the case. You can see that uh, anxiety uh, is not a significant predictor at the uh, conventional 0.05 level. Neither is student interest. You can see the mastery goals still remains as a positive and significant predictor in the model. And uh, you can see that engagement also remains as a positive and significant predictor. Now, re with respect to INC2, the slope is reflecting a difference in predicted logits between uh, students in the medium, uh, cat medium income category and the low income category. And you can see that we have statistical significance right there. And then for INC3, we also have a positive coefficient right here indicating that students in the uh, high income category uh, had a higher predicted uh, logits than uh, students in low uh, income category and we have statistical significance here and you know just keep in mind that the coefficients the values are in the uh, reflecting the predicted change in logits per unit increase on your predictor variable uh, but we can indirectly uh, think about them in relation to probabilities by looking at the signs and talking about that so you can see then that with INC2 because that coefficient is positive that's telling me then that students in the medium income category had a higher probability of passing the test than students in the low income category and for the INC3 uh, predictor that's telling me then that students in the high income category had a greater probability of passing than students in the low income category. Then we'll scroll down a little bit further then and go to that last piece of output that I was showing you and so this first row uh, where it says block one uh, the likelihood ratio test and uh, that's given right here all of this information is actually going to be the same as a likelihood ratio test associated with that uh, particular model um, so in other words it is just reflecting uh, the the uh, increment and fit over a null or intercept only model. So that's not going to be particularly interesting in our output. The main things that we're going to be interested in are in, with respect to models two and model three where we've added in um, uh, our predictors across those models. So with model two recall that we added in our interest and engagement predictor. So we have a likelihood ratio test that's given right here. The two degrees of freedom represents the fact that we've added in two additional predictors over the predictors in model one. And you can see that we have statistical significance. So that's indicating that uh, by virtue of adding in the interest and engagement uh, predictors, we now have a significant increment or improvement in fit over model one. Then, with respect to Model 3, where we've added in those additional uh, income variables, so INC2 and INC3 right here, the likelihood ratio test uh, result, we have two degrees of freedom. That's reflecting those two predictors that are added in, and we have statistical significance associated with that test. So by adding in uh, our income predictors, we uh, this resulted in a significant improvement in model fit from uh, Model 2 to Model 3. Okay, so I thought uh, one other thing that I would show you is just an alternative way that you could carry out uh, your analyses, um, your hierarchical binary lo logistic regression analyses uh, in Stata. So what we're going to be using is the LR test command. So, and what that's going to necessitate is basically running each of our models separately, storing estimates from those models, and then using the LR test command in order to test the, the uh, improvement in fit from one model to the other. So what I thought I would do is go ahead and use the drop down menu for part of this and then walk you through uh, some of those steps. So we'll start off by going to statistics, binary uh, uh, outcomes right here and click on logistic regression reporting coefficients. For our dependent variable I'll select pass and then for our independent variables I'll select anxiety and mastery goals right there. So when we click on OK we get our results. This is going to be the same results that we had up here with block one. So those are exactly the same and what we're going to do now is store the estimates from this model. So I'll type in estimates, then store, 
and then M1, that's just an object that's going to contain the information uh, from our model. So I'll click on, I'll, I'll press enter, and so now we have estimates from that model that have been stored. If I go back to statistics, we'll go back to binary outcomes, logistic uh, regression, and we'll add in our next two variables. So we'll type in, I'm just going to go ahead and type it in, interest and engage right here, and we'll click OK and we'll store the estimates from this model. So now I'll type in estimates, store, and then M2 for model two, and hit enter. Then we'll do the same thing for model three. So we'll go back to binary outcomes, logistic regression, and in this case, I don't have to use the, uh, the uh, variables that I had created previously. I can actually use the I dot prefix here. So I'll type in I dot, uh, and then income, lev with that capital L, and so it's going to recognize income level as a factor variable, and it's going to do the recoding for me. So now I'll click uh, OK, and so now you can see we have our output, and um, so this output is the same as the third model uh, when we ran using the nest reg command. So you'll see right here that uh, you can see it says uh, medium income and high income. Those are the labels for those two groups. And you can see that those coefficients are exactly the same as what we had generated before. Basically, we're comparing the medium income group versus the low income group and the high income group versus the low income group. So at this point, we want to store the estimates for, from this model. So I'll type in estimates, store, and then M3 and hit enter right there. And so now to perform our likelihood ratio uh, tests, we'll type in LR test and we'll do M1 and M2. So typing in M1 and M2 and hit enter and so now you can see that we get the likelihood ratio chi-square value and our significance level. And so this value that's given right here is the same value and, and the test is exactly the same as what we had generated up here um, when we used the nest reg command. So then we can also do LR test and M2 and M3 and hit enter and so now we have the likelihood ratio test and significance level uh, that allows us to determine whether uh, adding in our income level variables resulted in a significant improvement in fit over our uh, model two. Okay, so that uh, pretty well wraps up this video presentation on hierarchical binary logistic regression and Stata, and I appreciate you watching.